Shalom Chavim, it is good to uh, talk with you once again. Uh, oh, by the way, for the uh, Christian people that do watch this video, Shalom Chavim, Chavim is friends. Uh, I say that a lot because uh, there are, by the way, there are many Jewish people that do watch these videos. You may not be aware of that, but I do get private emails uh, from time to time, and I know that my brothers and sisters are watching this. I get them both from men and women that are Jewish from Israel. Uh, and there's a lot that I need to reach out there to them on. I pray, ask you that you'd be praying for me regarding reaching out to the Jewish people. Uh, I feel strongly about wanting to return to the homeland. Um, it's been quite some time. 2006 was the last time I was there. Uh, I used to live in Israel, for those of you that do not know that. Uh, I was in a suicide bombing in 2004. By the grace of God, he nearly uh, or helped me by his grace to uh, escape that bombing just very, very, very near near close to uh, being involved in that. But um, it's getting strong in my heart to want to go home. I have to be quite honest, very strong. I uh, won't go into that right now, but if you would, just be praying for me about that. Uh, I, I'm really concerned right now over several things that are going on around the country, and so I'm just going to speak to you from my heart a little bit. And one of those is, uh, of course, uh, Israel uh, at the brink of having to strike Iran because of the nuclear weapons issue. Um, you can't blame them, and quite in fact, uh, I'm sure that will probably happen, uh, most likely will happen. Uh, will the United States back them? I think they will. Uh, but the thing is, is it's not that Israel needs the backing of anyone. God is going to have our back, and that's the thing. If we just step out in faith, God will take care of the rest. Uh, we are looking at an upheaval of issues, though, around the world, and, the, and I normally don't go too much into these things, but I think it's really important that you kind of know. I've talked to you a lot about the Vatican uh, pressing Israel for making a covenant with them, which is part of the 70 week of Daniel. Uh, you need to read that chapter 9 uh, verses, oh, I guess at least about verse 24 to 27, 28, something like that, um, where the prince that shall come uh, would be of the people that destroyed the temple and the sanctuary, which was Titus, the Roman general, so therefore... Uh, the prince that shall come, which happens to be an Antichrist uh, spirit there, is going to be a Roman. It's just plain and simple. You can't get around that. I don't know why people keep looking to Amaginadad as being that, uh, that Antichrist spirit because, you know, it's a religious spirit to begin with. So just keep that in mind. It is a religious spirit. Uh, Satan always comes as a religious spirit. Uh, when Israel... Um, did not receive uh, Jesus uh, of Nazareth to be Moshiach ben David, uh, it, there again, it was a religious colliding. Uh, they were all Jews. Uh, Jesus himself was a Jew. They all went to temple. They all went to synagogue. Uh, you have to keep in mind that you had the Pharisees, you had the Sadducees, they disagreed in doctrine. It's kind of like the Christians today. You have the Baptists, the Pentecostals, uh, the Methodists, whatever the case may be, but you have all these different uh, opinions out there, uh, including Catholicism as well. You have uh, the president, or excuse me, uh, the gentleman running for president, Mitt Romney, who is a Mormon, uh, which the Mormons do stand a lot for Israel. But I, I do want to mention to you, don't let Satan pull the wool over your eyes. And I definitely do not support Barack Obama, although Barack Obama has done a lot of good things for this country. Uh, he's done a lot of bad things as well. That's uh, so what we always find out with presidents as they come and go. The only president, I think, in the United States that has really taken a true stand with Israel was Richard Nixon, although he was impeached. Um, kind of sad that that happened, but he's the only president of the United States that took a mighty stand with Israel uh, without politics in mind. And that was when uh, Prime Minister uh, Golda Meir called him in the middle of the night and asked for his help. And Richard Nixon, President Richard Nixon, made the comment that when she was talking to him, he remembered the words of his mother when he was a child, that she told him, one day you will come into power, and when you do, you will have the opportunity to do something for Israel. And whatever you do, son, do not forget them when that hour comes. He said he remembered those words when, oh gosh, I just feel God all around saying that. He remembered the words of his mother when Golda Meir was talking to him. And when she finished, he asked her, what could I do for you? What do you need? And it was the largest shipment of arms overnight ever in the world, in the world's history, from what I understand. Um, God bless that man, and I, I believe he has passed on now since then. But I, I really believe that God 
will never forget Richard Nixon. So, uh, anyway, just let me say this to you though about Mitt Romney. Uh, Mitt Romney, he, he's a Mormon. I know a lot of the Christians begrudgingly are supporting him because they figure it's the, the worser of two evils. Uh, you, we look at him as being a supporter of Israel, but he is for a two-state solution, just like Barack Obama is. And when God talks about those that are dividing his land and what he will do with them, you got to keep in mind, it doesn't make it a better situation. It doesn't make it a better. But I realize we have no choice in the candidates here, so everyone is looking at the worser of two evils. Um, and, and that being, even his running mate, uh, uh, Ryan, uh, is also a great concern for me as well, because I think that the blinders are being pulled over our eyes when we're looking at this, because you're thinking, well, they're, they're Christians and everything. It seems to me that we're about to put an Ahab on the throne. It seems America is truly walking into the footsteps of, uh, of, of, of Israel, you know, when God wanted to lead them by Samuel the prophet, and yet they didn't want the prophet, so they ended up putting an Ahab on the throne. But granted, I mean, I, I can understand the frustration of the people that are that vote. I'm a registered voter as well. Um, do you want Barack Obama, who's a Muslim, who definitely does not support Israel, although he, he makes that great boast when he's in his political campaign, but uh, it doesn't seem like anybody wants to remember what he said to Benjamin Netanyahu when he tells him to go think about things and walks out on him uh, and leaves the king of Israel sitting in his Oval Office uh, to go share dinner with his family, which as I pointed out to you in another video, uh, that he is definitely uh, like... Um, uh, Ab what is it, Abigail, I believe it was Abigail, that uh, it was her husband uh, that, that, that did such a stupid thing to, uh, uh, in fact, his name in Hebrew means fool, uh, the man that did that, that turned out David, and David was going to kill him, but God stayed his hand and wouldn't let David kill Abigail's husband. Instead, God brought that man to his death within 10 days of those accusations. Um, and I don't say that about Barack Obama like that. My point is, though, it's a spiritual connection you have to understand. And Obama is just a representation of this nation, is what he is. He's a representation of the nation because he's the president of the nation. And so, therefore, it's almost as if God will bring judgment on our nation. And that's the serious part. It's not Barack Obama himself. It's the nation is what we have to look out at. Um, but that being, I, I have a strong feeling that Barack Obama is going to lose this election, and uh, which I would be glad for that. But the thing is, is you're going to put Mitt Romney in there, who is going to be for a two-state solution. Uh, it reminds me uh, also when we think about Israel wanting a king, we think about how that when, when they said that, they wanted someone to lead them out to battle. And of course, Mitt Romney is a type that wants to build up the military, and I'm all for a strong military as well, not against any of these things. But there's just some little types in there that I'm seeing. And when I tell you about the Vatican trying to get control of Jerusalem, and they're going to make a covenant that's going to start the 70th week of Daniel, you have to look at the politics of the United States. The United States, I believe, is in Revelation. When it talks about, um, this is in the Christian uh, Bible for my Jewish brothers, there is a passage in there that talks about uh, a, 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 a beast that rises up that has two horns like a lamb, but he spake like the dragon and ends up giving his power unto the first beast there. That to me is definitely going to be when there's going to, someone's got to come into power. And I, I believe Obama could have done this easily, uh, but Mitt Romney, I think, may end up doing the same thing, uh, handing over our military strength to the United Nations. Uh, how they may do that, I know we're already kind of linked in with the United Nations. The United Nations is basically ran by the Vatican. They're, they're in the background running this whole system here. And that's what they want to do with Israel. They want to bring the United Nations in to, to quote unquote, maintain peace there. Um, and Israel's going gonna, Israel's gonna to consent to this. And when they do, that's what's going to bring all this turmoil around the world. And with uh, Paul Ryan being Mitt Romney's running mate there, it concerns me because he is Catholic. Not that he's not a good man, and, and please understand me, with Mitt Romney as well, and with Paul Ryan, I don't say these are not good men with good intentions, but you have to understand there's something going on in the background that neither of these men really realize what's going on. And it's spirits. It's a, it's a spiritual warfare. And Satan is trying to get all of his men into position to be able to dominate this world. You know, Satan wants 
you know, you have to understand what is it in the Christian Bible? I think it's Second Thessalonians, if I remember right, where it talks about that he would be in the temple of God, worshiped as, he, as if he were God, exalting himself all that is above that is called God. Now, this is talking about that, the Antichrist that comes in the end. So, we, Almagina God is not going to be your Antichrist, nor anyone like him, nor any Muslim like him, because he's going to sit in the temple of God to be worshiped as if he were God. Now, a lot of us, we think of the third temple being built. And yes, I believe the third temple will be built. Is this really God's will? It is God's will to have a third temple because he said he would sit in that temple and he would reign uh, forever and ever. And we know that, we find that in Ezekiel, I believe, in the 37th or 38th chapter, if I remember right. But the, the thing is, though, if you build a temple and it's not built where it belongs, where the Dome of the Rock happens to be, and you build it alongside the Dome of the Rock for some quote-unquote peace plan, God is not going to be for that. And you need to understand that. That is not the will of God. This is why, several reasons why God brings two witnesses on the scene. One, uh, he has to bring the two witnesses on the scene to get Israel to recognize where they made their mistake. And the first mistake they've got to point out to them is that they shouldn't have signed the covenant with the Vatican in the first place. But that's prophetic. It's got to happen. It will happen. Uh, but they're there to point it out. Another thing is, it's really sad, especially amongst the Christian world, that God has to rise up two witnesses. And you know my stand on that. It's Elijah and Moses. I know that a lot of people think Enoch. And you know, this really doesn't... I don't have a major issue with that anyway. And it's not something that sends your soul to hell if you think the other way around or if I think the way I think. Um, it's not something of a salvation issue. Uh, I look at Elijah and Moses for the simple reason as is we have a strong backing throughout the Torah, through the Tanakh, that Moses does come back. He said it himself. God said to Moses, um, he says to him, and when he talks about, he gives him the serpent, uh, his, stick, his stick turns to a serpent. Uh, he pulls it back up as normal again. Then he shows him his hand. His hand turns to leprosy. He puts it in his bosom, comes out, and it's clean again. Um, and then God says a very strange thing to Moses. He says to him, if they... Do not believe, the, or, or, or excuse me, something like, I'm just paraphrasing. Uh, um, they may not believe the voice of the first sign, see, but they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Now, that's obvious that he's not talking about the, um, the two natural signs, because now he's talking about a voice of a sign, and then he goes on down, and he reiterates that. I, I, if you would check it out, in, in, um, that's over in the book of Exodus Shemoth, uh, the, uh, I believe it's the third chapter, when God meets Moses at the burning bush. But, but the point is, is that, that God shows that they're going to be, believe the voice of the latter sign. And yet the natural signs were never convincing enough for Israel. Uh, there still was doubt. There still, they went into the wilderness, 40-year journey, Every one of the original ones died off. So they never really believed the voice of the first sign. Uh, Moses was that voice. He was a voice for God. And we have uh, in the latter days, though, uh, God said that he, they would believe the voice of the latter sign. So, and it's kind of ironic that he says voice because it makes me think about when we look at Elijah and the spirit of Elijah went from Elijah to Elisha. And when he parted the waters and stuff, the children of Israel said, does not the spirit of Elijah rest on Elisha? Um, so it kind of makes me wonder, these two witnesses, are they anointed with these spirits? Because even God points out the voice of the latter sign. Uh, we also have where Moses, after the, the Egyptians are dead, he says in uh, uh, Shemot uh, 14, Exodus 14, that uh, I will sing, I will sing unto the Lord that he has gotten victory over the horse and his rider. Now, the thing is, is the, the events already occurred, but now Moses is showing that a future event, that God is going to get victory over the horse and his rider. A singular horse, a singular rider. So this event has not been fulfilled as of yet. And Moses says, I will sing, Ashira. Okay, so, you, so we know, even, even our rabbis knew that Moses would have to come back, and, and they believed that to be in the uh, messian, uh, uh, mess messianic age, which is the age that we're coming into. Uh, so, here, getting back, though, to what I was telling you, it's a shame, though, that God has to send two witnesses. Why? Because the Christian people of today, the Christian churches, I should say, more so, uh, have gotten all these different religions and stuff. You're, you, you're not 
witnessing to Christ the way you should. Now, there's many good Christians in all of these churches, many of them, and I know they are, and many of them know. It's, like, it's all like, almost like, what, can, what else can I do? You know, you're kind of in a situation like, you, you know what you're in is not doing right, but you're just tolerating it. And, and I understand that. But, but God raises up the two witnesses because he can't get it out of denominational systems. And they will come and witness Jesus Christ. So when you take all these famous evangelists like Perry Stone and other ones like that, uh, Grant Jeffries and, and, and even my good friend Chuck Missler, these are great men, wonderful men, and, and Israel loves these people. But the thing is, is they come with doctrines, doctrines that... Much of their doctrine may be right, uh, and I don't say that against that. There's a lot of the doctrines that they have that are right. But everybody is, it's almost like they're trying to get a feather in their hat. I want to be the one to win the Jews to Christ so we can say the Methodists did it, or the Baptists did it, or the Presbyterians did it, or the Pentecostals did it, or the, uh, uh, you know, all, all these different names, Church of God, and, and, and so on and so forth. And, and now, they, now that some of them are just saying, well, we're non-denominational, but yet, you know, I, I know personally that many of them, they're linked to denominations. You guys, have, as much as you know the book of Revelation, know that that great whore, they, they couldn't, they made an image into the beast. You know, that, that's your World Council of Church joining in with it, and you're going to allow the Vatican to make a peace agreement with Israel, and it's going to look good. The man will probably win a Nobel Peace Prize when, when this is actually done. Yes, they will build the third temple next to the Dome of the Rock. That's true. They're going to do that. Uh, Israel is going to lose Jerusalem, the, the East Jerusalem at least. So part of it they'll probably still get to keep. But they're going to lose East Jerusalem uh, because the Vatican is using the Palestinians. And you Palestinian people, many of you guys out there, some of you Christians in fact, are fallen hook, line, and sinker for this. You're just a puppet for the Vatican to use you so that the Pope can get that temple for Israel there in order for him to get in there and to sit in the temple of God to be worshipped as if he were God. I don't see how else you can see it. And the elections that are coming up, I, I think Mitt Romney's going to win. And I don't say that for a great thing either, because believe me, he's going to be for that splitting of Israel. He's going to be for the Vatican getting the temple there. That's why he's got a Catholic running mate. And... and uh, Glenn Beck, I've always admired Glenn Beck for his stand for Israel. And as I watch him on uh, the television program that he has now, he's out there. And, and it was kind of interesting to me. He kept talking about, we've got to get the Catholic vote. He had CV in the background of his, uh, of his newsroom there, Catholic vote. Where's the unity in that? Now, he did great campaigns out there, uh, you know, with, with the Christian community. But what, why is it it's the focus is on the Catholic vote? You know, this is where the churches are going to come right into that and they've got to organize and they're going to come together. Why? Because the Bible said you could not make war against her, so you ended up joining her. And that's what's going to happen. It's, it's not popular to stand against stuff like this. And I know it's not. I know when people see this video and see that I'm not for Mitt Romney, and I don't say Mitt Romney wouldn't make a good president. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't say that at all. And as far as better than Obama, sure, I think he's better than Obama. But the thing is, is I'm looking at what's going on behind the scenes. And I'm afraid that there's things, and, and, and it may not have nothing to do with Mitt Romney at all. But you got to keep it. And, and on top of that, when, if Mitt Romney does win, he may not, he, this may be, we may have a foul issue in this. You got to remember, most all the, all the doggone uh, precincts for voting, gosh, I don't know what the percentage would be, but many of those are in churches. And they want Obama out because of him being a Muslim, so they want him out. And I, I, I definitely agree with you there now. Don't get me wrong. I do agree with you there. I'd like to have him out as well. I wish we would. I wish I would have rather had Jesse Ventura for president, personally. Uh, at least I'd have felt like it would have been a little bit more straightforward, more honest uh, than what we're getting out here. But nonetheless, let me, let me just say this to you. If Mitt Romney gets it, especially with it being close, somebody's going to call foul. I am very concerned. Uh, of the unrest that will happen in the United States. Uh, it, would, it would definitely give, uh, Obama may would have to call, uh, bring in martial law because of it, because if the rioting begins, and there is so much talk about rioting. I told my wife long before all this chatter started about rioting, probably about a year ago, I said if President Obama does not get reelected, it will bring a, a nation of unrest in this country, and I believe thousands of people will die as a result. And I definitely do not incite that. I wish the, the people that support Obama would refrain from such uh, behavior. Do not, don't let 
Satan put something in your mind that is not the right thing to do. And I say this to all the brothers and sisters out there that may support Obama. I mean, each person has a right to what they want to support, but I'm just afraid, though, that th this is what's going to happen in this country. And if there ends up being a lot of bloodshed over something like this, which God forbid that that were to happen, um, Obama would, would, would have to call in a martial law in that case there. And this is what a lot of people are expecting. You hear people talk about this all the time, but he would have to do it. I mean, what else is he to do in order to stop the unrest? But the thing is, it's also going to open the door for them to disarm the nation as a result. You see, our, our, our failure to act properly and act godly is going to backfire. And we're just really in a serious situation, friends. I, I, pray, I ask you to really consider the hour you're living in. And really, it's, it's not so much about praying who to elect for president. I think right now you need to be praying as Christian people that you're ready to go in a rapture. Not according to what organization you're in. God will have... Souls probably from every denominational walk, maybe, that will go on that rapture. But you really need to seek God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all your soul. Don't let this busy hour cause you to miss the greatest event that is about to take place. Because when Jesus comes for his bride, you have to understand he then is done with the Gentiles. There will be many Christians that will go into, the, into tribulation in that seven-year period, many of them far more than ever would be in a rapture. The rapture will be such a minority. I mean, if it was 10% or 1% even of what claimed to be Christians, that's such a minority. And it's going to be small, you know? Enoch was a type of your rapture. He went up, one man. And the saints that went through the tribulation was, was Noah and his sons and family. Eight souls were saved by water. Look at all these minorities that always get brought in there. And that's one reason why, even like with Enoch, people say, well, he's got to come back and die. No, he doesn't. He is a type of the raptured saints before tribulation. And so therefore, if that's the case, then all the raptured saints have got to come back and die too. So, you know, you'd have, you can't make the word of God kind of twist around like that. Oh, by the way, real quick, before I end the video here, let me just say this. There was a, a precious person that sent me an email asking me about the, uh, Satan disputing of the body of Moses. Now, by the way, my Jewish brothers and sisters, that's in the Christian Bible. It says that Satan was disputing over the body of Moses. And they asked me if I would answer that, and I haven't got back to answer you. But let me just tell you this here. The, I think I know why that dispute actually was. Um, Satan knew the Word of God. And you've got to keep in mind, books like the book of Job is believed to have been written before Moses wrote his books. Uh, but actually the dispute, we don't know when the dispute takes place. We see it written in the Christian Bible, so therefore we have to assume that Satan had access to the entire Torah, the Tanakh, all the comp compilations of the Navim, the Kodavim, uh, the writings and the prophets. So he had all of that at his disposal to know who Mashiach should be and what he should be like. And so the thing is, is when Jesus comes on the earth, uh, it's almost as if Satan had in his mind that Moses probably should have been Mashiach, but he was not. And it troubled him because he knew what the writings were on him and knew that Jesus would die, he would suffer. Uh, Daniel wrote that, that the Messiah would be cut off. It'd be before the, the second temple, which, by the way, my Jewish brethren, I need to get this written down so I can tell you exactly where it says. It's in the Talmud. It's in the Talmud where it says that the Messiah would die before the building or before the second temple was destroyed. We, got, we have that written in there, but the thing is, the second temple is destroyed, so what do we do with the Talmud? We just say the doctrine's wrong? No, the doctrine was right. We just didn't accept it because... It wasn't who we thought it should be. Eh, we got to deal with that. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Moses, though, he dies, but there's no body. And see, Satan is the death angel. So he is the one that has the right to escort that body back to the dust of the earth, according to the curse. And Moses' body does not go back to the earth. So it did not go back to dust. The question is, is where is the body? And this is why Satan is disputing over it. So Satan is convinced that Moses should have been Mashiach, but the problem is, is it doesn't match the Word of God. He knew from what the Word said that Mashiach would suffer, he would, he would be striked, etc. And he knows that this didn't happen to Moses, so he's disputing back and forth with Michael over this issue about that body of Moses, because he, he's almost convinced that it's Mashiach, 
but then here comes this Jesus. Now he fulfills the scripture. So it's like, wait a minute, I know God doesn't make mistakes is what is thinking us. And, and perhaps God used Moses as a type of Christ in that regard there, because he did say that God would raise up a prophet likened unto him. And therefore Moses did die. And the next thing you know, his body is nowhere to be found because he's resurrected, goes into the presence of God just as Mashiach would do in real life on the earth. So this is a, a little confusing for Satan, and this is why he disputes with Michael the archangel over the body. Anyway, God bless you. Till we talk again.